Hello, friends. So today I'm going to give you a really quick walkthrough to remind you that you already know what risk management is. You know how it works. You know all the steps. You know all of that. Everything. Everything that's on the CAP exam, which is a certified authorizational authorization professional, or any other RMF certificate certification, you already know that. Okay. So I'm going to walk through, this is going to be part one. I'm going to do another one too, but I'm going to show you how you already know what all those concepts mean. Okay. But all we have to do now is to put a, a label on it. Like we don't have the same labels on it that NIST uses. Okay. Or that the ISO uses. All right. So I'm going to go through this simple example so that you see exactly what risk management means in a business, okay? And what I've done is I've used a family as an example, okay? So I'm gonna zoom into this stuff and we're gonna go over this really quickly. So if you think of your, your uh, family as the business, okay? So for example, you're part of a family of four, two adults and two children under the age of 12, okay? You and the other adult work full-time in the home. Both children attend virtual school from home. So you can go on any, like whatever, find a business. It doesn't matter. Burger King, uh, Amazon, whatever. And, you know, this is, and think of what the business is. Now, what's the objective of your household? Okay. As think of it as a business for many of us is the physical and psychological safety of all family members to aid in an upbringing that equips them to be independent, law abiding, educated, and productive citizens. All right. We want people in our household to be physically and psychologically safe so that there's a reason for safety. There's a reason for security. Okay. The end goal is not security. The end goal is not safety. The reason for that is so they can grow up to be independent, law abiding, educated, and productive citizens. Okay. We have to think about that for the business. There's a reason for security. It's not just to be secure. Who cares? Okay. What's the end game of security? What's the end game of safety, whether it's in the business or in your house? Now we get to the controls. You know, we have administrative, operational, and technical controls that we have in organization. So in your house, the administrative controls are the rules th th that the parents put in place. Okay. For example, adults will work to pay all necessary expenses to contribute to the physical, emotional, and psychological safety of themselves and family members, which goes to the household objective, right? Adults manage and maintain living areas, appliances, and other household items to minimize interruption of daily tasks, activities, and work. Adults will assess and respond to fundamental needs of household members in a way that supports the household mission. Uh, and adults will write and communicate the policies. All right. If you think of it as think about that. Now, we don't write this stuff down. OK, we feel like it's understood. Right. That people uh, in our homes know this. But in a business, you got to write that stuff down. It's not understood. OK. Rules for dependents and children. No visitors in the home without permission. No visiting other homes without permission. No video games or TV during school hours. Complete all educational requirements. Ask for help when you need it. Bedtime by nine on weekdays, 11 on weekends, manage personal and assigned spaces in and outside. The These are the rules that we give to our children. Okay. Or, or if you're a child in a house that your parents give to you, if you want to use the car, you can only use it. Then. You got to put gas in the car. You got, you know, these are the rules that all speak to this household objective. Okay. Now the operational controls, we miss this especially when it comes to uh, practice within organizations and in the house, okay? And in our house, in our homes. Operational controls are, so the administrative is what you write down or you make a video of, or you, you know, you put it somewhere so somebody can see it and read it and or hear it, okay? The operational controls are, are the humans Okay, that act on those administrative controls and 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 you bring them into fruition. Okay, adults will verbally re reiterate rules. Adults will post rules in the visible areas of the home. Adults will communicate and implement a reward punishment system to reinforce admin controls. Um, adults will continuously assess friendships, media, social networking habits, 
you know, who you're talking to, you know, look at what's going on with your social media accounts, uh, depending on how old you are. Adults and children will get to know neighbors and join the neighborhood watch, written a community. You see what I'm saying? The, these are things that we do in our homes to uh, enforce those administrative rules that we've put in place. Okay, I'm gonna get to the business in a, uh, uh, in another video, but I just want us to see here how risk management works, okay, and how all these things are in place, at least at this level, at the control level, okay, uh, in our homes. And then you got the technical, implemented with technology, locks on doors, parental controls on computers, security cameras inside and outside the home, insurance. Uh, and here you go, your routers, your firewalls, you got a fence, you got dogs, you got lights, you got all this. Okay. Those are your technical controls and your risk appetite statement. Okay. Now this goes back to threat, which we're going to get to in the part, uh, part two of this video, but your risk appetite is for your household as a result of an enterprise and security risk assessment. So you've done a risk assessment. Okay of your neighborhood? What's the crime like in the neighborhood? Uh, what, what are my neighbors like? Uh, it, it, is there a neighborhood watch here? Are the police here a lot? You know, what's the, the property value around here? You do all that stuff. Okay. You come up with a risk appetite. For example, we will not accept risk that results in physical harm to household members that requires hospitalization. We will not accept risk that could result in a significant meaning more than $5,000 loss of revenue or significant increase in current expenses. Okay. And policies need to support and align with the risk appetite. So anything, the risk appetite is your taste, your taste for risk. Okay. What's my taste for risk, uh, uh, given the environment that I'm in. Okay. So we first say we won't accept that the results in physical harm to household members that requires hospitalization. Okay. So let's say for example, you live in a decent neighborhood, in, in a decent neighborhood, but you know there are some shady, you know, places here and there. Okay, so and and you realize that if your child, your small child, you know, is outside playing. Okay. Sorry about that. Y'all, my mic is being crazy. Uh, so I would, so the risk appetite for me growing up was low. Okay. Because there was nobody around. It was just me and my cousins and stuff. So we would be outside till like whenever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, like really late, especially on weekends. Okay. But if you live in a city and, you know, around more people and all that, then your risk appetite, you know, uh, you, you may not have an appetite for a, a lot of risk. Okay. So this is just a really quick, easy to understand, I hope, um, example of what we mean when we talk about administrative and operational and tech, you know, and all that stuff. We already know this. I'm telling you, we already know this. Okay. So in the next video that I make, what I'm going to do is I did, I did another one. So this is with the household. Okay. I did another one over here. Oh, I cannot stand when I forget to lock these pictures down that I'm going to go over once I lock the pictures down and put some more information here. Okay. But here we're coming to, I want, I want to use now the language that we use in RMF. Okay. Security plans, threshold, risk categories, all that. Um, but we're going to use an objective of you making $200,000 a year or more. Okay. That's going to be the objective. All right. Just like the objective here was that everybody, you know, grow up safe and secure and able to be productive citizens and, and be successful and, and all that. Okay. And the threat, we want to minimize any threats that would get in the way of that and maximize opportunities that will help that, you know, help us reach this objective. Okay. Either exceed it or reach it more quickly. Okay. We don't want to forget about opportunities. We talk about threats a lot. Okay. But we need to start having just as much conversation about opportunities. All right. But I'll do that next time. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all back here. Bye.